tanking, rolling, eclipsing, and scanning. I'm Benjamin Higginbotham, and this is your Space Vidcast Space Pod for December 20th, 2010. On November 5th, 2010, NASA scrubbed the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery due to hydrogen leak. At first, it looked like this was another GUP issue, which fenced the hydrogen boil off away from the vehicle. However, as engineers inspected the tank a bit further, large cracks in the insulation foam were detected, which later led to the finding of cracks in metal stringers. As more cracks were found, NASA decided to delay the launch until 2011 to allow additional time for testing. Now, at noon coordinated universal time this last Friday, NASA began testing with a full fueling of the Space Shuttle Discovery's orange external tank. Half a million pounds of supercooled liquid hydrogen and oxygen were loaded into the tank while engineers collected data from sensors. At 1925 Universal Time, the tanking test completed after NASA had fully pressurized in simulated pre-launch conditions. We've been hearing about it this morning, Mike, but uh, so far so good in the test uh, so, you know, results so far. Yeah, no doubt uh, the GUP didn't leak, which was uh, a good milestone. Teams recording the data, um, the temperature data looks like what they were expecting it to look like. Um, they're, uh, they couldn't even wait for the computers to do the processing. They're down by hand, typing things into Excel spreadsheets to try to look at temperature data and strain data, and that's all looking in family too. So they're they're pretty excited with all that. So yeah, it looks like we're getting good data. Like like anything with the hazardous operation, it's it's nice and boring today, which is a good thing. So everything's looking just the way it's supposed to. NASA needs some time to evaluate the data further, but thus far it's looking good for an early February launch. Now, while the tanking tests are completed, NASA's not done analyzing the vehicle yet. After filling the external tank with all that fuel, they then emptied it in preparations to roll the entire shuttle stack back to the vehicle assembly building this Tuesday. Once there, engineers will take x-rays of the external tank to ensure that there are no additional surprises in store that have yet to be detected. If all goes well, we'll be looking at a new launch target date of no earlier than February 3rd, 2010. Tonight through tomorrow morning will be quite a rare event. For those of you in North America, you'll have a great opportunity to see a lunar eclipse on the same day as winter solstice. Now, in the last 2,000 years, a lunar eclipse has only happened on winter solstice once. A lunar eclipse happens when the Earth passes between the Sun and the Moon, causing our planet to cast a shadow over the Moon and blocking out its light. The best viewing area will be in North America and will start tonight with the best viewing times for most areas happening before dawn on the 21st of December. Also happening tonight, the Cassini spacecraft will make a 48-kilometer pass over the North Pole of everyone's favorite moon, Enceladus. The Fields and Particle Instrument will try and sniff out anything coming from the moon. That's a whole lot going on what's essentially the shortest day of the year. As we get closer and closer to the holidays, we're feeling more and more giving here at Space Vidcast. Over the past few weeks, we've already given out three Roku HD players, and we've got another one to give away on December 24th at 0200 Universal Time during our live show. Uh, since it's Christmas Eve and all, we sure think it would be cool if we could give out other great prizes as well, maybe Mission Clock and some Space Vidcast wares. The only way to win is to watch live, and for those of you in the U.S., that show will be this Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you there.